Hello and welcome to Bedford Autodrome, where Bennett's Bike Social plans to answer a question that has echoed around the pubs and the bike meets for eternity. That question is, which style of bike is king in the corners? Conventional wisdom would say sports bikes are the best bikes at going around corners and we know that because race bikes tend not to look like Ducati's Street Fighter V4S. They tend not to look like Piaggio's MP3 500. They usually don't look like Royal Enfield's Interceptor. They certainly don't look like Yamaha's Tracer 700. And really they don't look like Honda's Africa Twin Adventure Sports. What they do tend to look like is Suzuki's GSX-R 1000R. And so I guess we'd know which bike would win a race if we came to Bedford Autodrome and did lap times. But there's more to lap times and flat out speed when it comes to cornering. There's things like confidence, feel, stability, uh, stuff that's really hard to measure with just lap times. And so what really we need to measure that will be a data logger. And we happen to know someone who's pretty handy with a data logger. Come in, Mr. Robert Gray, old friend. <laughs> So Rob, how would you describe yourself? Uh, I'm, I'm Dean Harrison's crew chief. Uh, I've worked in BSB for 18 odd years doing data logging. So. 18 years? Yeah, Good I'd Lord. say work, but. <laughs> yeah, and so you're, you, what, what kit have we got here to look at? What are we gonna make, what are, and what are we gonna actually be measuring, do you think? Uh, to sort of quantify how a bike goes around corners, rather than get lost in details like brake pressure and that kind of stuff, I phoned 2D and borrowed some expensive kit from MotoGP bikes which will tell us how the bike moves more than anything. Right. So rather than looking at the amount of throttle and gears, we can measure very accurately the acceleration, very precisely the lean angle, the speed, so we'll be able to say when uh, the rider brakes for a corner, when they tip into the corner, the lean angle, when they how hard they come out of the corner confidence almost yeah so this is very much kind of um, not getting into the too much into that sort of nitty-gritty detail numbery stuff but this is much more about the reality of cornering exactly yeah um, and so this kit is actually used in MotoGP uh, yeah they, you can't see it under all this tape because <laughs> I don't want it to fall off but uh, if you took the ferrons off a uh, M1 uh, you'll find a couple of these they use it for the launch control and uh, anti-wheelie systems traction that kind of stuff Wow. so sort of in general sort of in a broad picture that, that kind of in terms of going round corners, what makes bike A better than bike B as such? Yeah, better is a relative thing. Uh, like you were talking about lap times, then ground clearance becomes an issue. Oh, okay, yeah. uh, if you're talking about going around a corner because we've just driven up to the Isle of Skye in Scotland, better is a, a, a thicker seat or something that doesn't uh, give you pins and needles in your legs yeah. uh, after a while. So in terms of uh, this test, uh, because we're a circuit that maybe hasn't been ridden that much, yeah. actually sitting a bit higher might be an advantage. It's very flat here, so you might actually get a bit more confidence because you can see better on the Africa Twin yeah. versus this, which sort of uh, compels you, you feel obliged to go fast in this. And that's exactly the kind of data we want to find out, really, because it's, as we say, it's not just about speed, not just about lap times, but, but maybe, you know, because the Piaggio's got three wheels instead of two, yeah. is that better at the apex than, say, I don't know, a GSX-R? This is yeah. the sort of thing we want to find out. <laughs> that's above my pay grade i guess so but i don't know yeah uh, well we need someone who does know absolutely and we have a test rider step this way hello mr michael mann it's me then it's bike social web editor <laughs> now it's fair to say isn't it you're a man who's fairly familiar with corners and fairly familiar with riding different styles of bike on tracks yeah yeah i have to be as familiar with a, a 125 cbf as a as a as a as i have to be with a gsx l thousand and so is there anything sort of in the top <coughs> of your head that makes a bike particularly good at, or confident at going round corners uh, you've mentioned confidence already stability yeah. definitely so tires and suspension weight transfer but also your a feeling with a bike really a lot of it a lot of it for me is about about where the weight sits on a bike and if you can tip it in confidently and keep it tipped in yeah. as in so it's stable rather than flopping about or under under acceleration under braking if it's stable on all those parameters then you you've automatically got confidence in the machine and you can worry about what you're doing i looking ahead to the next corner is there any sort of, <coughs> of this lineup of bikes we've got is there anything that you sort of think 
actually, do you know what? The G6R is just going to blitz all of them, or is there anything where you're thinking, actually, I don't know. Maybe the maybe the Royal Enfield might be a bit quicker at a certain <laughs> point on the track. But you never know. It's it's not got as much power clearly as the Suzuki, so you might you might start feeling uh, the bike and its brakes a little bit more. You might trust the. The Piaggio with its extra wheel at the front there, the yeah. Street Fighter I'm perhaps more familiar with out of this lineup. Um, it's got the wings perhaps for stability under braking, but I um, yeah. <laughs> do you think that? I think the gonna, sports bike is 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 there it's for the score on every yeah, highly on everything. It's got one hand on the crown already, hasn't Excellent. it? Excellent. So what we're gonna do then is we're gonna do a few laps, Michael's gonna ride around, we're gonna download the data and we're actually gonna come up with just a little chart of which bike out of all of these is king in the corners. Coming. So that was a fairly hectic day's riding on track, furiously data logging. Um, and we, have we come up with any facts and reached any conclusions? Which we should caveat that, that this is uh, this is not deeply scientific. We have been having a bit of fun with this, so don't get don't take it too seriously, because I think Bob normally sort of your level of data logging uh, would be the whole day just doing one bike, and as you said, losing less gaffer tape. <laughs> a lot less gaffer tape. Yeah. yeah. Um, but have we gathered enough data and gathered enough kind of opinion to draw some sort of pub conclusion about which bike is the is the winner in the corners which one is the cornering favorite out of all of these bikes uh, i think so we've certainly got some good points for each bike and some bad points uh, again we'd sort of caveat it depends it what you're doing with the bike uh, in terms of lap times there weren't too many surprises the, okay uh, the quickest one was the ducati i don't know if that's yeah, I think because of the power, especially the torque of the Ducati on this particular circuit, you're coming out of um, slow corners onto fast straights, and it just—it's got so much power and oof. Uh, it, it's, it's not really much of a surprise that it, that it is the fastest because it gets to its, you know, top speed uh, quicker than anything else. And equally, the slowest was the Piaggio, which I guess is that no is surprise. Not a surprise. <laughs> no, no. In terms of the the only thing that did surprise me was the Ducati with you uh, with the apex speed. Uh, so you were. Uh, quickest on tied with the Honda and the Suzuki. Uh, the Honda was a bit of a surprise to me. Yeah, I think because of that front tire, I was running a different corner, a different type of corner. It, lo uh, it looked like you were attacking it a bit different. Yeah, uh, definitely. And then, and, and of course, on the flip side, then uh, with the Ducati, I was almost squaring off like a like, yep. a like a racer would. You know, you're getting to a point, turning, and, and then firing out because it's got that power. So sorry, we're talking about now a peak ape uh, apex speed. Uh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The, so uh, we had two corners. We took the apex speed of both. Uh, it was slightly. It was uh, joint. It was tied almost exactly between the Honda and the Suzuki. Between the Africa Twin and the Suzuki, joint. Uh, apex speed right on, okay. the, on the first part Highest. of the corner okay. right, yep. um, but then you, you, I think you said you really enjoyed throwing it around on the track and actually it had the it was the quickest bike in terms of flipping from side to side which was the quickest the, the, the Ducati. Ducati yeah absolutely yeah I think that you 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 tend to ride the bikes differently depending on their characteristics whether it's wheel size suspension travel or, or weight transfer um especially um, the evidence is there isn't it with the ducati the difference between the ducati and the africa twin it's certainly running a lot a lot smoother corner on the africa twin but it or the ducati it's more about getting there and getting fired out again but racer style i suppose and so what's the next category we're looking at uh i had a quick look at the distance from the apex that you started to break to some degree it's irrelevant because the GSXR is so much faster. So this is rewinding. So this is the point where you begin to brake as you're coming into the apex. Yeah. Okay. So it's that that sort of apex lowest speed back, and that's yep. telling us what exactly. So. Uh, so it's a, it's one of those things. I suppose a bit of it's confidence with the circuit, um, confidence with the brake feel. It's irrelevant in one sense because the bike there's such a difference in speed. Yes. 
uh, top speed along yep. the straight, yep. the, the apex speeds weren't all that different, okay. um, which is a fairly common thing to, to come across. Uh, but presumably your data will show you the top speed and then that can connect to the distance Absolutely. Back from the apex to start to break. Yes, so the, the fastest speed again was the Ducati. Uh, the longest distance uh, for the braking was the uh, GSX-R right. actually. Um, I bet the Ducati was close, wasn't it? Uh, not, not far off, yeah. uh, uh, 30 meters or so, which yeah, the, at those speeds is, is gone in a split yeah, second. Yeah, and the sounds, Street, street Fighter brakes are excellent. Uh, in terms of maximum braking, i.e. how hard you brake, uh, so that feeling that's trying to, if you're in a car that pulls you into a seatbelt or on here tries to, uh, you know, send mm. you over the front, the, the, the Ducati and the Suzuki were joint highest, uh, which is a really good number, it's just over 1G braking, which is nice. almost the limit of what you can do on the bike before the wheel comes off the floor or systems start to kick in. I Absolutely, you can feel, you can feel on both. More, uh, the Ducati felt a little more stable, for yeah. sure. Um, and the Suzuki, you could just about start to feel the rear lifting a touch, but it wasn't dramatic. No, um, uh, the Royal Enfield was the not the worst in terms of braking, but perhaps I didn't need to brake that hard. The most genteel. To be, yes, yes, which fits its character. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, so sort of um, just sort of relating through this, we talked about the best and the worst. So it's a good job that we're going to have these. We've had these up on screen because otherwise <laughs> I'd be completely lost night by now. So, but but overall, then we've got some top line figures that show that. Effectively, the Ducati has basically kind of won, for want of a better word, every every sort of test that we've thrown at it. Okay, yeah, it's an yeah. all-around package. It feels great on the track, and it feels just as good on the road, to be honest. But but in terms of what we've been we've been trying to achieve today, in terms of you know uh, reliance on the brakes, comfort comfort with its with its initial turn, how quick I can turn, how quick we can get it from A to B, and then powering out, of course, as well. So yeah, it's, it's, it is the complete package. So, so just in terms of empirically then, it's kind of like we've got, uh, we've got a Ducati at the top of the tree and we've got at the bottom of the tree, uh, yeah, the, the Piaggio, but uh, which we wanted to be a bit. I wanted to be a bit higher because it's supposed to have this kind of a bit more uh, grip. Uh, and a bit it's, more... it's a close run thing. It's like saying uh, the, the guy at the back of, of a race is he's not. Yes, he's the slowest on track, but there's all the people watching are a lot slower than he would be. <laughs> uh, he's the slowest of a fast bunch. So we could have brought another bike here that would be even sort of Possibly. worse. Yeah. Okay, so that's the numbers then, Michael. So just in terms of because we, we were talking about this sort of twin track, we've got the the numbers that we yeah. measure, which is kind of a bit cold and a bit sort of lifeless, and and on the other side we've got how you actually feel about what's the most fun to ride which bike is the best bike which style of bike is the best bike in the corner uh, corners as far as you're concerned uh, what was the most entertaining was probably the tracer i really enjoyed I hope you know hiking that around yeah it it had a it had a it gave me a, a, a kind of a calm feeling mm -hmm. like it was really really nice to, to to throw in and it was predictable enough without getting too feisty um yeah sure the gsxr and the ducati are, are fast aggressive you know you've got your eyes are on stalks you've got to be alert to to every every input the rider makes at least with certainly with the royal Enfield and with the tracer you, you, it's a little calmer so it allows you just to float around a little more perhaps be a bit more precise in terms of apex and and, and carry that corner speed too yeah um but you saw it when I came in and we've got the, we've got the camera on me as soon as I took my helmet off. Yeah, you know, the smile was beaming. Tracer and, and the Enfield were hilarious. Yeah. Uh, but if you're going for lap time, if you're going for aggression, if you're going for that real sense of the reward you get as a rider from doing something really, really well, then it's the street fighter. So again, it's that horrible word, but in terms of fun, yeah. um, there's a different kind of fun for the, for the sports bike and for the naked bike and for the fun for the, the Royal Enfield. Um, and the Tracer. So where does the Africa Twin fit in, just briefly, in terms of your kind of happiness? Because it, 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 it wasn't shamed by anything that we did here, and, and you made the comment that it actually was quite quick. It's fast. It's fast. Yeah. Like it's faster than the Tracer, I think, yes. wasn't it? In top yes. speed, yeah. Yeah, top speed rise. What, uh, what was the top speed on it that we measured on the Africa Twin? Do you remember? Uh, 112. Okay. 112 miles an hour. Yeah. yeah so, and it gets there pretty well as well, you know, considering it's a, it's a heavier machine and design, you know, designed to do a specific job. But in terms of cornering confidence track. on tarmac with that 21 inch front wheel and that big long travel suspension, that big weight transfer, did you feel that that was kind of like not quite so much fun? No, you know. No, it, you, you lose a lot of confidence very quickly on that. I think piling into the first corner, you, your eyes are on stalks there because you think, oh, What's it going to do? You're not quite sure. Yeah. Especially on the rebound for the suspension, because on on that particular part of the track, you're you're over to the left after that long, long straight, 
and you're picking the bike up and it's kind of it's coming up again after all that break and then you over to the right for a slightly sharper uh turn so it's uh, a little less predictable so so <laughs> so for you then if you could sum up then so which was your best you know if you had to go and do this again which bike would you choose what would be your first choice and what would be your last choice if you asked me to go and do another 20 laps i'd take the street fighter yeah and which one would you be the last one to choose <laughs> piaccio i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> mainly because it's so limited on 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 power on speed um the straights aren't that long here but they feel a lot longer than that and also there's only so far you can go before you start scraping, scraping. things yeah was it the only bike that you scraped particularly yes was, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah yeah so the future is then for for for, for world superbike <laughs> and for bsb and for moto gps take the fairing off and fit wider bars so, i want to see a naked class in, yeah in, in the British exactly well, we've been talking about it for a long time it'd be great to see it so officially then in a kind of jokey kind of way the uh, the winner the best bike in the corners is your 205 five horsepower. horsepower v4 naked street bike um anyway well thank you guys it's been a been a, a bit of an education <laughs> So there we go. I think we've answered the uh, the biggest pub question, <laughs> you know, that kind of bike meet question, which is the bike we want. It's the naked Street Fighter making 205 horsepower. So that is the best bike in the corners. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out uh, Bike Social, www.bikesocial.co.uk, where you can read all these numbers and all the graphs laid out. Uh, and don't forget to check out Bennett's Rewards with everything that, that Bennett's Insurance offers. And uh, Please comment below. I'm sure there's going to be a raft of comments about how much we've got wrong, but that's great. We want you to comment. We want you to get involved. Remember, it's a bit of fun. Uh, and thank you very much for watching. Yeah, that feels well planted is, a, is a one of those odd words. I don't, I don't really know what it means. How's that? Lollopy. You what, sorry? Lollopy. Lollopy, that's a good word. I like yeah. the sound of that. <laughs> How was that? That was hilarious. I bet that was just the same as the last two. That was so much fun. Because <laughs> it's, 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 it hasn't got any power, so you just try to... You know, does that mean it, you... Does it make you want to take liberties with it? Because yes. Because it, it doesn't feel yeah. dangerous. Yeah. Hang on. Just talk for a second. Mom, 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 mom. Mom, 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 mom. I've been having five poos a day for a week over this. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> I was tempted. Normally do this like. I was tempted. No, I was tempted to blame the hummus, but it's not. It's this. <laughs> yeah. Give me so irritable you can go bowel back to syndrome. Your eight poos a day now. Can't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Right.